Chapter 9 Developing the Aura by William Walker Atkinson When it is remembered that the aura of the individual affects and influences other persons with whom he comes in contact, and is, in fact, an important part of his personality, it will be seen that it is important that the individual take pains to develop his aura in the direction of desirable qualities, and to neutralize and weed out undesirable ones. This becomes doubly true when it is also remembered that, according to the law of action and reaction, the auric vibrations react upon the mind of the individual, thus intensifying and adding fuel to the original mental states which call them forth. From any point of view, it is seen to be an important part of self-development and character building to develop the aura according to scientific occult principles. In this work of aura development, there is found to be two correlated phases, namely, one, the direct work of flooding the aura with the best vibrations by means of holding in the mind clear, distinct, and repeated mental pictures of desirable ideas and feelings, and two, the added effect of mental images of the colors corresponding to the ideas and feelings which are deemed desirable and worthy of development. The first of the above-mentioned phases is probably far more familiar to the average student than is the second. This from the fact that the average student is apt to be more or less familiar with the teachings of the numerous schools or cults which agree in the axiom that holding the thought tends to develop the mind of the individual along the particular lines of such thought. This is a correct psychological principle, for that matter, even when those practicing it do not fully understand the underlying facts. Mental faculties, like physical muscles, tend to develop by exercise and use and any faculty may be developed and cultivated in this way. Another teaching of these same schools is that the character of the thought so held by the individual affects other persons with whom he comes in contact and, in a way, attracts to him objective things, persons, and circumstances in harmony with such thoughts. This also is in accordance with the best occult teaching, from which, of course, it was originally derived. I heartily endorse the facts of these teachings and pronounce them fundamentally correct. And in this connection, I may say that every healer may apply his own methods plus this teaching regarding the aura, and thus obtain greatly increased results. By the faithful, persevering, holding in mind of certain ideas and feelings, the individual may flood his aura with the vibrations and colors of such ideas and feelings, and thus charge it with auric energy and power. By so doing, he gains the benefit of the reaction upon his own mind and also secures the advantage of the effect thereof upon other persons with whom he comes in contact. In this way, he not only builds up his individual character along desirable lines, but at the same time develops a strong, positive, attractive personality which affects others with whom he comes in contact. I do not consider it necessary to go into details here regarding this phase of holding the thought, for, as I have said, the average student is already familiar with the rules regarding the same. In a nutshell, however, I will say that each individual is largely the result of the thoughts he has manifested and the feelings which he has harbored. Therefore, the rule is to manifest and exercise the faculties you would develop and inhibit or refrain from manifesting the ones you would restrain or control. Again, to restrain an undesirable faculty, develop and exercise its opposite. Kill out the negatives by developing the positives. The mind produces thought, and yet, it tends to grow from the particular portion of its own product which you may choose to feed to it, for it not only creates thought, but also feeds upon it. So, finally, let it produce the best kind of thought for you, and then throw that back into the hopper, for it will use it to grind out more of the same kind and grow strong in so doing. That is the whole thing in a nutshell. The second phase of aura development, as above classified, however, is not likely to be familiar to the average student for the reason that it is not known outside of advanced occult circles, and very little has been allowed to be taught regarding it. But, the very reticence regarding it is a proof of its importance, and I strongly advise my students to give to it the attention and practice that its importance merits. The practice, thereof, however, is extremely simple, and the principle of the practice, moreover, is based solely upon the facts of the relation of color and mental states, as shown in the astral or colors, as fully explained in the preceding chapters of this book. In order to intelligently practice the development of the aura by means of flooding or charging it with the vibrations of psychic colors, it is first necessary that the student be thoroughly familiar with the scale of colors related to each set of mental states or emotional feelings. 
This scale and its key is found in a number of places in the preceding chapters. The student should turn back the pages of this book and then carefully reread and restudy every word which has been said about the relation of mental states and auric colors. He should know the mental correspondence of the shades of red, yellow, and blue so thoroughly that the thought of one will bring the idea of the other. He should be able to think of the corresponding group of colors the moment he thinks of any particular mental state. He should be thoroughly familiar with the physical, mental, and spiritual effect of any of the colors and should, moreover, test himself, psychically, for the individual effects of certain colors upon himself. He should enter into this study with interest and earnestness, and then by keeping his eyes and ears open, he will perceive interesting facts concerning the subject on every side in his daily work and life. He will perceive many proofs of the principle, and will soon amass a stock of experiences illustrating each color and its corresponding mental state. He will be richly repaid for the work of such study, which, in fact, will soon grow to be more like pleasure than like work. Having mastered this phase of the subject, the student should give himself a thorough, honest, self-examination, and mental analysis. He should write down a chart of his strong points and his weak ones. He should check off the traits which should be developed and those which should be restrained. He should determine whether he needs development along physical, mental, and spiritual lines, and in what degree. Having made this chart of himself, he should then apply the principles of charging the aura with the color vibrations indicated by his self-diagnosis and prescription. The last stage is quite simple. Once one has acquired the general idea back of it, it consists simply in forming as clear a mental image as possible of the color or colors desired, and then projecting the vibrations into the aura by the simple effort of the will. This does not mean that one needs to clinch the fist or frown the brow in willing. Willing, in the occult sense, may be said to consist of a command, leaving the rest to the mechanism of the will and mind. Take away the obstacle of doubt and fear. Then the royal command performs the work of setting the will into operation. This, by the way, is an important occult secret of wide application. Try to master its all-important significance. The mental imaging of colors may be materially aided by concentration upon physical material of the right color. By concentrating the attention and vision upon a red flower, for instance, or upon a bit of green leaf in another instance, one may be able to form a clear, positive mental image of that particular color. This accompanied by the willing and demand that the vibrations of this color shall charge the aura will be found to accomplish the result. Have something around you showing the desirable colors, and your attention will almost instinctively take up the impression thereof, even though you may be thinking of or doing something else. Live as much as possible in the idea and presence of the desirable color, and you will get the habit of setting up the mental image and vibration thereof. A little practice and experience will soon give you the idea and enable you to get the best results. Patience, perseverance, and sustained earnest interest, that is the key of success. End of chapter.